Let's talk about farming food on the planet Mars. We all love the idea of landing humans on Mars, and we know that Elon Musk has dreams of building a giant self-sustaining city there. But we never hear too much about the logistics of how we would keep people alive on multi-year missions to a hostile alien planet. You might have recently heard that NASA scientists were able to grow a plant in soil from the moon. Samples of lunar regolith that were brought back to the Earth on the old Apollo missions were recently used to test the ability of an Earth plant to grow in moon soil. And it worked. We grew a moon plant. And then, just a couple of weeks ago, we got this new report from China's Zurong rover that it's found hydrated minerals in the Utopia Planetia crater. The early results seem to point to the presence of groundwater, or even surface flows of water, on Mars much more recently than we had believed. We're still talking millions of years ago, it's not like we just missed a lake on Mars, but this does go against previous beliefs that Mars has been a dry, frozen stone for billions of years. So those two stories obviously got me thinking about Matt Damon, and that time he grew potatoes in the soil of Mars using nothing but his own poop and a homemade contraption to make water from hydrogen and oxygen. Could we actually make something like that happen in a future Mars colony? Well, yes and no. It certainly won't be as easy as Matt Damon made it look, but there is some merit to the idea, and people here on Earth are already working on making it happen. Not surprisingly, Elon Musk has a role to play in all of this as well. So let's try and figure out how close we are to farming on Mars. This is the space race. Starting off with this idea that we can just take a plant that evolved in the soil of the Earth and just sow that into soil from an alien world and get the same result of a healthy, functioning plant. Does that actually work? Well again, yes and no. Looking into some follow-up articles on the moon plant experiment, we can see that the mustard greens that were planted in lunar regolith did sprout and grow in an identical way to the same plants grown in Earth soil. That lasted for about a week. After day six, the plants in regolith showed slower growth, stunted roots, and spots on the leaves. Later, genetic analysis of the plants showed that the plants grown in regolith were under significant stress compared to the earth soil control plants. The experiment was still successful because the moon plants did survive the entire 20-day test period, but they did not thrive. The lunar regolith lacked a lot of the nutrients needed to support healthy plant growth. Still, researchers say that this can be a powerful learning experience. It's possible that we can use genetic data from the moon plants to engineer a new variety of plants specifically to grow in lunar soil with very little impact to their health. We genetically modify plants all the time to make them better food crops here on Earth, so there's no reason that we can't do that for the moon as well. But what about Mars? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a sample of Martian soil in our possession just yet. NASA currently has a sample return mission in the works. Their Perseverance rover is collecting rock and soil from the surface of Mars as we speak, and there is a future plan in the works to get those samples back to Earth, hopefully by the year 2033, but it's going to be complicated. Though we do have a very good idea of what Martian regolith is made of, we have spent a very long time studying the planet from afar and driving robots around on it. In theory, Matt Damon was right about Martian soil having all of the nutrients necessary for plants to grow. Oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, potassium, phosphorus, it's all there. One of the obvious disadvantages of the Martian soil is that because there is no life on Mars, that we know of at least, 
there isn't that level of organic matter that we enjoy here on Earth with soil that is full of worms and bugs and decomposed plant and animal matter. That's why Matt Damon added his poop to his potato farm. There actually was an experiment conducted in 2014 that used imitations of moon and Mars soil to grow a variety of plants in a greenhouse. The result of this study was very interesting. The plants grown in simulated moon soil performed worse than the earth soil control group, but the moon plants still grew. This is the same result we just found with real moon soil, so that's a good start. The plants grown in the simulated Mars soil actually performed significantly better than the moon plants, matching and in some cases even exceeding the earth soil control group. The Mars soil simulant actually produced the highest overall biomass out of the three groups. Now, this study wasn't perfect. They did add some organic matter to the moon and Mars soil samples in the form of cut grass but still a fascinating result. Unfortunately, one thing that neither Matt Damon nor the 2014 study took into account was the high presence of something called calcium perchlorate in the Martian soil. Back then, we just didn't know it was there, but now we do, and that complicates things. The perchlorate is a salt, and we know pretty well that plants don't like to grow in salt. And even if they could, the perchlorate is toxic in large amounts, and the plants would absorb those toxins through the growing process and in turn produce poison food, which is bad. On the upside though, since the perchlorates are basically just salt, they can be easily washed away with water. The idea is that we could simply rinse the Martian soil and then it would be suitable for growing food. After that, we should be able to separate the perchlorate from the rinse water and still use the water to nourish the plants. Not bad. There is also an idea that bacteria could be introduced to the Martian soil that would actually eat the perchlorate for us and would even create oxygen for us as a byproduct. Also, not bad. We've talked a lot about the James Webb Telescope lately and the amazing pictures it's been able to capture. They're historic images that have helped reshape our world, and today, an emerging new platform, Masterworks, democratizes the art market by allowing anyone to buy and sell fractional shares in high-value works of art from artists such as Picasso, Banksy, Basquiat, Monet, and Warhol. Many don't know, but the art market performs better during periods of inflation and contemporary art prices outperformed the S&P 500 total return by 164% for the past 26 years. JP Morgan has said alternative assets are no longer optional and art is one of the highest performing alternative assets that isn't correlated to the stock market. I've been personally investing in art since 2019, but never dreamed to have the ability to own works from artists such as Banksy or Monet. I prefer to buy and hold for longer periods of time, but Masterworks also has a secondary market where members can buy and sell shares if they don't want to wait until the art is sold. And for those willing to wait, Masterworks has sold three paintings since 2017, each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. There's currently a waitlist to sign up, but with my code, you can skip the waitlist and start investing today. And now let's get back to the video. Obviously, we can't talk about Mars without talking about Elon Musk, or in this case, more about his wannabe cowboy brother, Kimball. While Kimball might not have the world-changing genius of his brother, Elon, he more than makes up for it in hats. Anyway, coincidence or not, Kimball Musk is heavily involved in the creation of indoor farms with a company he founded in 2016 called Square Roots. The idea is to create urban farms so that fresh food can be grown in the same location that it is consumed instead of having to ship fruits and vegetables over thousands of miles from, say, Mexico to Canada, for example. This results in a suboptimal food that has reduced nutrients and flavors compared to a truly fresh picked fruit. Square Roots uses shipping containers that are kitted out with high tech growth environments that use the latest in LED lighting and hydroponics. 
One of the biggest advancements in indoor plant growing recently was the development of a low-power LED light that can directly substitute for sunlight using a purple hue. The system is incredibly efficient. Just one shipping container with 320 square feet of volume can produce the same plant yield as a 1-2 to two acre farm while using minimal amounts of water. This idea is often referred to as vertical farming. By eliminating the need for soil, we can actually take advantage of the full volume of something like a shipping container to maximize plant output. So could something like that simply be transported to Mars? We could easily fit one or even two of these prepared shipping containers into the cargo fairing of a SpaceX Starship which we know is the rocket that Elon Musk plans to use to build his Mars city. And Elon's primary goal with this Mars colony is to create a self-sufficient outpost on another planet, making human life truly multiplanetary. To do this, the Mars colony must be able to maintain indefinitely without the need for supply ships from the Earth. So that if there was an apocalypse here, life would continue on out there. This means that farming will be critical to the success of Elon's city. A very similar company to Musk's called Eden ISS is looking specifically at implementing this kind of technology outside of the earth. The project is referred to as ground demonstration of plant cultivation technologies for safe food production in space. And they're putting the technology to the ultimate test by conducting their research in the most inhospitable environment possible, Antarctica. The goal of Eden ISS is to push these greenhouses beyond the state of the art with advanced nutrient delivery systems, a high-performance LED lighting system, a biodetection and decontamination system, and food quality and safety procedures and technologies. Eden ISS has already caught the attention of NASA, who joined the project in 2021 for a series of experiments on vegetable cultivation techniques for use on the Moon and Mars. NASA even sent one of their own scientists to the Antarctic testing facility to research how future astronauts could grow lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and herbs using as little time and energy as possible. NASA has expressed in the past that the ability to grow fresh vegetables in space, on the moon, and Mars will be critical to making long-term colonization possible. Their packaged and dried food can't provide the nutrients necessary for long-term health and wellness, particularly since they've found that the nutrient value of packaged food will decline over time, making the situation even worse for long-duration missions such as a human colony on Mars. So, does that totally rule out the possibility of creating farms on Mars? Well, in the traditional sense of a farm, as in a giant field of plants growing in the soil with tractors and stuff, then yeah, that's basically impossible under any circumstances. In the sense of an enclosed, greenhouse-type situation that uses Martian soil under controlled circumstances, like Matt Damon's potato farm, yes, that is possible. It's tricky, but possible. That doesn't mean it's the ideal solution, it would be really cool, but would lack the efficiency and plant output that we would need to sustain a colony of people. So, the best and most likely scenario is the self-contained farm-in-a-box concept put forward by Kimball Musk and Eden ISS. This would ensure that we get the most food possible for the least amount of energy used and taking up the smallest amount of physical space. And maybe even instead of trying to send a shipping container inside a Starship cargo fairing, we could outfit a SpaceX Starship to function as a greenhouse itself. We know there are going to be different variants of the Starship. One for deploying Starlink satellites, one for transporting cargo, one for refilling, one for transporting people to the ISS, and others for sending crews on missions to the Moon and Mars. So. Another variation on the ship design could be a farm ship, where the entire 687 cubic meters, 
or 2,253 cubic feet of available space is outfitted specifically for growing plants. Using Tesla's development of robots and artificial intelligence, the Starship greenhouse could be fully automated, landing in advance of a human crew and ensuring a constant supply of fresh food to sustain them through the multi-year stay on Mars or the moon. It's a pretty cool idea to think about. Anyway, let us know how you think people are going to grow food on Mars in the coming years. And would you sign up to be a Mars farmer? I'm kind of down. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.